Good morning and welcome to The Real Story. I'm Jen Bernstein. Connecticut's congressional seats also on the ballot this November, and that means one of Connecticut's longest standing elected officials, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro, is asking voters to let her keep her seat. But she's up against a formidable opponent, Margaret Stryker. You may have seen her attack ads on TV. Fox 61's Tony Terzi reports. If you're like me, you're sick and tired of what's going on in America, of police being attacked, of politicians lining their own pockets. I'm not focused on attack ads. I'll tell you what I'm focused on. I'm focused on the relief that people need from the coronavirus. I will defend, not defund the police. And Margaret Stryker's message is part of why this Milford businesswoman has so far earned endorsements of at least a half dozen police unions in the third district, including New Haven police. As someone who has always supported first responders across the board, I reached out. Asking for the support of the local law enforcement, unlike the 15-term incumbent, she says. And that's an unfortunate contrast, but it's a reality. I don't know what their decision-making uh, efforts were about, but I continue to support them and will we'll continue to do what I have been doing all these years. But Stryker says Congresswoman DeLauro has failed the 3rd District. 30 years ago, Connecticut was a very prosperous state. We are now at a point in time where we have jobs leaving, we have our economy crumbling, we have our infrastructure crumbling. DeLauro emphasizes that Americans are desperate for help from the federal government. To be able to address their health care issues, to be able to address their jobs, to help their families. That's where I am focused. I started a two-person business. I grew it to 120 people. I've run union shops, non-union shops. I have transacted uh, over a billion dollars worth of real estate. The career politicians can't fix America, but we can. Tony Terzi, Fox 61 News. All right, so this morning on The Real Story, we are talking with both women. And first up today, Congresswoman Rosa DeLora. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Sure, happy to be with you. All right, so we're going to talk about the race in just a moment. But first, I want to get an update on what's going on in Washington with the next relief bill for COVID-19. We know that the president mm -hmm. called off talks, and then he kind of walked that back a little bit on Twitter and said that he called on the House and the Senate to act and pass something. So, so tell us what's going on right now. Well, what's going on is that the president did walk away from the negotiations, and uh, both Secretary Mnuchin and, and uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi uh, were in conversation, and the reports back were uh, that they were moving and that they, uh, that they had uh, uh, made some progress, and they were continuing at that progress. The problem with the president is, is that he doesn't understand that the pain that the people are feeling in this country today, where you have 40 million people plus who are unemployed, where you have the child care industry shutting down and where parents are not going to send their children uh, to school uh, if uh, or are not going to send their kids to school if the schools aren't safe and they're not going to send their children to child care when there will be no child care doesn't care about what is going on uh, with unemployment benefits or the additional money for uh, testing uh, for treatment uh, and for contact tracing uh, so and for state and local government uh, where uh, the what, what's happening with state and local government, which is very interesting, is that uh, this is money uh, for police, for fire, uh, and uh, for uh, for teachers, uh, and those who would say, like my opponent and uh, like President Trump, uh, that they support the police. That in fact, what they are about doing right now uh, is defunding the police, uh, because that money for state and local government, which they are opposed to. Um, uh, is to go directly uh, to support uh, first responders. And we're going to talk about uh, that topic in a second. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said that she was going to uh, discuss later this week, and, and we're taping this on Thursday, that she was going to discuss this on Friday, the Commission on Presidential Capacity, uh, which has to do with transferring the power from the president under the 25th Amendment uh, to the vice president in the case of the president's death, incapacitation, removal, or resignation. She alluded to the fact that the medicine, the medications that he's been on being treated for COVID-19 had impaired his judgment. Are you in agreement with her 
on taking a well, look I will at wait. this. I, I will wait to hear what the speaker has to say. I've had not had a conversation uh, about this with her, so I will wait to uh, hear what she has to say and, and, uh, and then deliberate from there. All right, let's get into the race now. You had mentioned police. Your opponent got a, you know, a lot of support from police, including from the city of New Haven, with the police unions giving them, giving her their backing. What was your reaction to that, and how do you combat that? Well, it's not a question of combating that. I'm a strong supporter of uh, the, uh, the police departments. I work closely with the New Haven PD and with others and with the chiefs, uh, with the uh, providing funding for the COPS programs and uh, the, the kinds of equipment that they need. I think what's interesting is that my opponent lies, and so does President, uh, about talking about defunding the police. The fact of the matter is, is that my opponent uh, and the president are right now defunding the police. They don't support the HEROES bill, which is for state and local government and people who have been serving on the front lines, like our police, like our firefighters, like our teachers. So they can continue to lie, but the fact of the matter is, is their lack of support uh, for state and local government uh, funding is defunding the police right now. Are you saying they're defunding the police because they're not supporting the bill that would give additional resources to police during this COVID-19 pandemic? They are what will happen with state and local government without the revenues that they need to move forward. They will have to lay off people. They will lay off first responders, police, fire, teachers, and in fact, that's what uh, the president and that's what my opponent are about, is defunding the police. Have you had a discussion with New Haven police and the police officers, officers there as well as the chief since that endorsement? I have seen the chief. We were, we were at a press conference uh, together and, uh, you know, uh, I, I believe that the New Haven Police Department is strongly behind me. All right, I want to give you a chance to respond to one of uh, Margaret Stryker's ads. Uh, she said mm -hmm. during it that they are sick, that people are sick of politicians lining their pockets, and then they showed a picture of you. So I want to give you a chance to mm -hmm. respond to that. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Uh, and you all have probably seen the ads over and over again uh, with my opponent's multi-million dollar uh, campaign uh, in attack ads. But what you don't know and what my Republican opponent doesn't say is that she is a slumlord. She was fined over $1 million by the New York Attorney General. She has been called one of the 10 worst landlords in New York. What she does is evict people from rent-controlled apartments. She throws them out, and then what she does is she may refurbish, and then she rents those apartments for a lot more money. So I guess she has no choice uh, but to make up the lies about me. And in addition to which, she is really probably a clone of Donald Trump in that regard with what he has done in the housing industry and in the real estate industry. And we will certainly be uh, bringing her what you just said there to get her response to that. Um, you've been in office almost 30 years, which is pretty incredible. Your opponent says that that is just not right, that someone shouldn't hold office for that long. What's your response to that? I don't have, look, and I, I, the people of the third congressional district make up their mind every two years. And they know the kind of job that I am doing for them. I represent and I'm the leader in the Congress for working families. They know I don't walk away from a fight. They know that I will stand up and fight for them. And they also know that I'm not there for the special interests and I will not walk away and I will not be cowed by special interests, millionaires or billionaires. Tell us why you want this seat again. You've done a lot of work in the last 30 years. Why do you want to keep doing this? 
Well, let, let me just just talk about the kinds of uh, efforts uh, that are really so exciting and so important uh, for working families today, especially we're in a pandemic. People are in a health care crisis, an economic crisis. They are desperate for government to be doing something for them, for affordable health care, for their jobs, uh, for their families, and how we can help out. What I've had the opportunity to do is, uh, uh, and the accomplishments, are the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. For the first time in 20 years, uh, money for research, uh, for a gun violence uh, prevention research. First time in 20 years, put in $50 million in my bill to do this because of the high rate of suicide and homicides uh, in this country. The, the agenda, uh, equal pay for equal work uh, for women paid sick days, paid family and medical leave, affordable child care, the, uh, 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 to stop the outsourcing of jobs uh, and giving them tax breaks uh, for companies to outsource their jobs overseas, stopped the transference of the Sikorsky Marine One helicopter overseas, uh, and it's being now done, and the production lines in Stratford, Connecticut are going, and people are uh, at, at work. The uh, uh, providing $11 billion to the National Institutes of Health to look for discovery of, 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 of diseases. Why? These are the issues that are now front and center. And we are going to have a new president. Joe Biden will be president. And I'm going to speak to uh, uh, the then President Biden about the first bill that he signs to be equal pay for equal work for women. Congresswoman, what do you do if President Donald Trump is reelected? What, is, what do you think Washington is going to look like? And will you be able to work with him? President, there will be a new president come January, and it will be uh, Joe Biden but if, and Vice if, President if Kamala well Harris. Right. So we obviously know that you're supporting them. But what if it's not? What's the what's the game play by Democrats? I believe, you know, look, it, it, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be elected president and vice president on November 3rd. We'll certainly see about that. Congressman Rosa DeLauro, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and talk with us on The Real Story. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, up next, her opponent, Republican Margaret Stryker, answering some of our questions. The Real Story continues in a moment.